Okay, apologies for any background noise. I've got the dog in here deciding to eat a bone. But in this video, it's a little bit overdue. We're going to talk about my kind of solar two year update, what the payback's looking like. And also one thing I'm going to give some consideration for is if I didn't have the feed in tariff, what would the payback look like then? So hopefully this video helps. Okay, so it's just been over a couple of years now that I've had my solar setup installed. So we're gonna go through kind of what the payback's looking like. I did make a little mistake, I realized with my last year's calculation with the gas savings, I hadn't converted it to kilowatt hours, so it was slightly off, and I fixed that for this update. Again, apologies for the noise, the dog decides that now's the best time to eat the bone. But uh, right, so here we go, so it's my solar house update. Um, about the payback calculations. So to talk about what setup I had before having solar, because that's really like our baseline. So before having solar, I used to use around 7,527 kilowatt hours of electricity annually. I work from home full time and have various servers on and, and that kind of thing. So in general, my consumption is higher, even though I have as, as much as possible energy efficient devices. In terms of gas, the only thing we use gas for is central heating and hot water at the time. Obviously we've offset some of that now with um, heating from solar surplus, but the gas used to be 11,718 kilowatt hours annually. And then finally, I, I put this petrol one in there, not as a direct kind of relation to the solar stuff, but it does play a part in the overall scheme. And that is that used to, I used to spend around 2,000 to 2,200 pounds each year on petrol. And you will see in this year's now factored in uh, some cost savings as my wife now has an EV as well, which obviously we can charge from electricity and solar surplus as well. So this kind of talks about the setup of the, the solar house that we have and kind of how things are kind of set up for us. So at the time of Getting to the end of the year, we had two electric cars. One is a Tesla Model S 75 kilowatt, the other one being a, a Nissan Leaf Tecna 40 kilowatts. In terms of the house, we have 30 Pimar 300 watt panels, equaling a 9 kilowatt solar array. On the back of each of those, obviously, is a Solar Edge optimizer. We then have a 6 kilowatt Solar Edge HD Wave inverter. We have a Tesla Powerwall 2, the non backup gateway version. So that's 14 kilowatts to around 13.5 usable uh, kilowatts of energy. We have the My Energy Zappi Generation 1, but with the hub. We then also have the My Energy Eddy, that's what enables us to heat the hot water from solar surplus. And then we have the My Energy Harvey, which is basically just a wireless access point that enables the Zappi and the Eddy to utilize the CT clamps. And then finally, one of the things that still helps drive uh, our savings is we're up with Octopus Energy and on the go tariff. So at the time of doing this video, that's 25 pence per day standing charge, the peak cost including that is 13.72 pence and then between half past midnight and half past four in the morning only five pence uh, per kilowatt which is one of the things we use to charge our cars overnight and heat hot water and whatnot okay so we talk about expected solar performance so my solar installer it's a company called forever green energy they're year two predictions um, so when i kind of had the quote from them, they broke down my expected generation over I think 10 or 20 years, I think it was. And they said my year two prediction should be around 7,556 kilowatt hours of generation. The Solar Edge app also creates a, a prediction based on the design tool that estimated 8,435 kilowatt hours of generation. And my personal uh, prediction was around 7,723 kilowatt hours of generation. So some variance in each of those three figures, but again, relatively close to Solar Edge one. I think is a little bit out, but um, we'll see what the actual raw numbers look like. Okay, so this is the year two data, so we can see exactly what's happened. So again, if you're new to the channel, when I had the solar set up, the ultimate goal was to be able to generate annually the same or more electricity from solar than 
we actually consume. Now see, our, so our electricity usage has increased for a couple of reasons. One, we have electric vehicles and also we now heat hot water with electricity as opposed to gas in general. Every now and then we may boost it a little bit from the gas. But so if we look at our year two data, we generated 8,379.61 kilowatt hours from solar. The total electricity consumed in the house was 13,343 kilowatt hours. So again, that's pretty good. And again, that increases just because we have two electric cars now and you know, that's just, just how it is. Uh, in terms of gas, we consumed 7,573 kilowatt hours. So again, less gas than we used to consume before solar. Uh, and the gas is charged at 3.10 pence per kilowatt hour. So you know, pretty standard. And in terms of petrol, not using any in, uh, in the cars that we use day to day for working and yeah, getting kids around where they need to be. So what does that mean in terms of payback? So year two payback results. So again, this is all in comparison to before we had solar. So this is kind of how we're trying to work things out over, over the years. So in terms of saved electricity costs, we've saved 1,149.68 pence uh, in electricity costs, because obviously that's been generated by solar. If you haven't had to buy those that portion of it from the grid, also, we're on the, the last feed-in tariff, so the feed-in tariff isn't that great, but we do get, obviously, uh, paid a smaller number for everything we generate and a slightly higher number for 50% of what we generated as part of the export, even though it doesn't matter if we export anything or not. And from that, we got paid £576.51 in the year. So again, this all adds into the, the payback of our system. In terms of gas, um, now that we're using electricity and solar surplus to heat the water and gas only being used for central heating then we've saved around 128 pounds 50 pence per year in gas in terms of petrol again i'll get to that bit in a moment but we we're saving around 3200 pounds in total petrol costs per year now that we are charging from uh you know the grid and solar surplus so Electricity cost has gone up, but petrol cost has completely disappeared. So excluding the petrol, because I think you could definitely argue that you know, everyone's going to have an EV. So we want to try and keep things comparative to help you decide if this is a good solution. The, the payback is around nine years, which I think is actually pretty good in terms of, you know, that's for solar and the battery. The battery definitely increases the, the payback cost quite significantly but I'm confident that the battery will still be working fine uh, past the nine years. In fact, Tesla guarantee it will be at least 80% capacity at, at 10 years. The solar panels are warranted, I think, for 30 years and um, generation is guaranteed about 80% after 20 or 25 years. I increased the uh, warranty on my inverter to 25 years. Optimizer is already covered for 25 years. So way out after this system has paid back itself, it will still be generating this all kind of literally proper free um, electricity and savings. If if you have two EVs like we do and you try and you decide to factor those costs in to the fact that now you're running uh, your vehicles from electricity and from solar surplus so you're not having to pay for petrol at all and you're taking those petrol costs in as savings as well that drops it down massively um, to only three years three months but again I call that the rose tinted version uh, of, of the situation really it's nine years payback okay but if you decide to get solar now there is no feed-in tariff anymore but you do have an ability to export so this is purely based on my situation again I have two EVs so I'm trying to minimize you know, I export so I'm not going to export a, a lot so these numbers obviously are specific to me but I thought I'd do something to try and help give you some estimation if you had a similar setup what the payback might be um, if you're not having a feed-in tariff. So in, in terms of the data I have, obviously 2018 and 2020 aren't full years, but in the first year of having solar, I exported 490 kilowatt hours, 2019, 770 kilowatt hours, and so far at the time of doing the, the uh, end of year for my anniversary of, of solar, 
it was 920 kilowatt hours exported. One of the reasons for that slightly higher number is obviously with COVID, working from home, so traveling less, so less charging of EVs and what have you. Um, but if I switch to something like the outgoing Optimus tariff, where I'd get paid 5.5 pence per kilowatt hour, I would have been paid the following each year so far. So 26 pounds 95 pence in 2018 for export, 42 pounds 35 in 2019, uh, 2019 for export, and in 2020, um, 50 pounds and 80, uh, 60 pence so far. Again, I'm minimizing what I export, so your, your mileage may vary. So without the fit, that would increase my payback by just over three and a half years. So payback would be 12 years, seven months, which actually I still think is, is pretty good. It's pretty good really. So I don't think the fact that the feeding tariff no longer exists is something to set you off getting solar. It still can make sense and you should probably consider doing it. So that's it, that's my two year update. So good, we're on track for nine years, which is great. Anything under 10 years is what I was hoping for. And then after that, it's just gonna be proper free energy. So it'd be interesting to see um, if the payback curve changes over the years. Obviously each year uh, I do get a fit increase with, uh, in terms of pricing, it's, it's adjusted due to, um, Int not interest rates, cost of living, living stuff. My brain's not working, but something like that. Um, but obviously these components also are deteriorating each year as well. So it's interesting to see year on year um, what the payback will be. Will it go up from nine years? Will it go down? Uh, and I'll probably start to map out a, a curve over time. Just, you know, when we get towards the end of the 10 years, was it going up or down in terms of generation and payback and stuff like that? But I hope this helps. Please leave comments and questions down below in the description please click that thumbs up um, icon it really helped me and the channel get this things noticed more with the youtube algorithm and yeah look after yourself thanks for watching this video a thumbs up would be really appreciated if you're interested in other geek type videos please consider subscribing to spectrum geeks why not also follow us on facebook instagram and twitter and before you leave why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest? Thanks again for watching.